All righty, it's 2.30 and uh, this month's webinar, as mentioned, is going to be using the number one used feature inside the system, the checklist feature, and the new kind of features that actually link into the checklist feature, the new monitor and monitor boards. As mentioned, if you're not using these features, you should be. You don't just have to build a checklist relating to safety. You can build it to do anything you wish. It might be a onboarding kind of checklist. It might be an induction. It might be, you know, you, obviously the most popular one is actually doing a pre-start checklist. It might be signing off on a safe work method or an activity or doing a process or a procedure in a certain way. So let's go through how to actually get the most out of this checklist feature. So if I come, I'll just select edit next to this one because I usually present with this one so I know what's it, what's in it. So the checklist feature allows you to actually relate this checklist to all these other different registers within your system. And I know some people are using it, but also what they're not doing is they're kind of not using it in the in the way that it's intended to do. So this is what I'm going to highlight in these kind of meetings that this is what you should be doing, especially if you're wanting to get some kind of accreditation like nine, uh, ISA 9001 and 45001. Or you're going through some audit process that you need to so, show certain things. It's a great way for you to actually use it in that way. So you can relate it to an activity. This is just picking up your activity register. So technically, if you've got a safe work method or a procedure or something like that, you can build a, a, a checklist relating to have you read the safe work method statement? Are you wearing the appropriate PPE? Have you identified the hazards? All those kind of things, because they can fill them off and they can sign off on this form and they can it'll actually go into and the log of that activity. Most of the time, it would be related to a machine of some sort or a pre-start checklist. You could relate it to a hazard that you've done the risk assessment, say for example, on the machine if you wanted to. Why is this compliance here? Well, you might have a forklift and you can upload the forklift code of practice inside the system here. And then what that will actually do is, you know, again, I'll just put you on mute then, um, Heidi. So, it, um, so you're looking at, uh, you would upload all these kind of code, code of practices or whatever it may be in the compliance register and, and, and also your policy register. So I'm actually doing this checklist relating to this machine, relating to this compliance, relating to my policy. So when you're doing an audit process and they're going, show us what kind of processes you actually got in place. Yeah, we're doing this checklist relating to this, to this, to this, to this, to this. So that's the philosophy of why you can actually link it to all those fields. So the checklist feature you probably noticed has also had a major upgrade in the, uh, since you, uh, many of you have had the system. And it has become a very, very powerful tool. So if I just select edit next to this, so you can actually make a checklist either a heading, a question, just, uh, so you, a, a heading, a question, a text box, all these different things. Now, these have all come from, even we've actually put this new star rating inside the system lately. And these are actually come from, you know, suggestions and requests from clients going, oh, it'd be really good if it did this. And as you know, we're constantly upgrading the system to make it the best it can be, and we listen to our clients. So with this kind of process here, you can actually change the size of that header. So it just works exactly the same as you would, you would actually use a Word document. So it's, um, I think like size, uh, header three probably is the best looking size. If you want sub sizes here, yeah, heading four and five, yeah, probably about it. So you can also put subheadings in here now. That's, this might be like, okay, workplace inspection, and this might be work your way through these details and da 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 da. So it's actually telling them what they need to be doing as per that, what the first initial request is. Obviously, this is the header. This is my opening kind of line. I don't need a photo hazard button, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to submit and I've got my heading. 
you would select add item you would open up another one of those boxes and you would actually select this here and then you can actually make it whatever you wish now previously the system only had header question and text box that's all it had now you can got the ability to do all these other things but another what a lot of people were saying is when they selected the yes no button it automatically when you select no brought up a hazard an action or maintenance mandatory field they didn't want that they've gone it's got to be more flexible so this is what this feather here is for so if i select that there if they actually you know can the user skip putting in an action yes all right so you can actually make it that no it automatically pops up and does that there so therefore you wouldn't have to select these buttons here because it automatically um, pop up if they select yes or no so you can actually make it yes or no now instead of just before it was no but most of the time you might want to just select it as no action and the same thing you would actually have to do is no action for the no here as well right yeah so and then you're looking at it um and no action for na so then you would actually tick these boxes so therefore it would actually have instead of the mandatory boxes there it would actually put these boxes there to do so now you might have a certain question that you go yeah they have to actually if they select no i i want them to actually put something in there yeah so therefore leave it you know go back change the feathers so therefore they do that but then you wouldn't put these buttons here, just an upload photo button. You can make little check boxes so they can actually select more than one item. You can actually have it as a gauge. You've got all these different things inside here, which I'll search, show you in the view section because it looks better. So you can build these items, even that rating system, as I mentioned. Do you want to be notified? Oh, I'll just go over these dates. The review date is the review of this checklist. Is it still relevant? Do I need to change something? This is the person responsible to do the review of that checklist. It will not email alert them if you've just put their name in here. It will put it into the person's to-do list. But if you wanted to email alert them that the review is due, you would use this section here. That's what that alert up there, that alert, in the manage alert for the checklist is for the review of the checklist, not to do it or anything like that. So, so you can do that there. Then you're looking at, do you wanna be notified that this checklist has been completed? So if this checklist is actually completed by someone, wherever it may be, and you go, I really wanna know that that person's done that checklist, you can select your name and yes, you will get an email. You'll also get an email, you'll see that email has been upgraded. Whereas on that email, you're looking at it, it'll actually give you all the answers of that person, what they answered. So literally a, like a PDF document of all the answers that that person's done. So new little kind of feature we put inside there. Again, people wanting to see what the people answered or what actions or whatever it is was related to it. Do you want to be notified that this is has been not completed if you've done it by the consent. Just leave it no at the moment because we are doing some tweaks there to make that feature much better. So it's um, and then you're looking at do you want uh, this to be public? Well, most of you know what public means. It means that this is going to create a QR code for this checklist with the name of the checklist on it. And if you make it public, that means a person can scan the QR code and it opens up the checklist on their device. Don't even have to have to enter a username and password. So most of the time, if it's just your employees uh, in your kind of facilities, the answer is yes, you would definitely make it public because we know the employee would do it. Uh, whereas if you don't, they won't. So if it's something that the general public can actually scan, you want to definitely sleep. No, you don't want to make it public. So. Do you want your employee list on the form? I think that just makes sense. They can either select their name, even though it does have a text box in there. If they select no, they still have to enter their name. And you've got signature box. Um, do you want to make this checklist private or hidden? So just the answer at the moment would be no. 
So it, uh, that's kind of mainly relating to the new form builder, it, um, which we're doing um, uh, some tweaks to. I see that Daniel's on, 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 on this uh, webinar. It, um, we've been working with Metro Corp in building this new form builder, which will allow you build forms and permits and later on safe work method statements. And uh, it's been a bit of a task, but getting there. So at the moment, that kind of links to that. So just leave that as no, an update. So when you actually create a checklist, as mentioned, it automatically creates a QR code for that checklist with the name of the checklist on it. You would print that out and you would actually, you know, basically stick it on the machine. But previously, when we were building it, I forgot to highlight there was open close fields. What is an open field? An open field means that this is actually going to create a, a drop down list of all the plant items at that site. It filters it for the site, or well, obviously filtered for that site plus any items related to the global site. Anything related to the global site will always be in the list. So it is best to actually close this field for a machine. Yes, you might have, say for example, more than one of the same machine. Obviously you need to identify which ones are, are what, but what you would actually do is you would actually come up here and you would duplicate this checklist, slightly changing the name of the checklist. So therefore it will actually duplicate because it will go, we can't duplicate this checklist because it has the same name as, as something else. So if it's, say for an example, a pre-start checklist for a forklift, pre-start checklist forklift number one, pre-start checklist forklift number two, but you copied the checklist and all you're doing is printing out the QR code and sticking that on the forklift number one or forklift number two. And what happens there is that the person doesn't have to think that much. They're just scanning a QR code and doing that checklist relating to the exact item. So it's um, if they do actually log action or hazard or maintenance, that's where it will actually be seen here. So you can actually see that history. But the main one is obviously every single time a checklist is completed, it turns into a PDF, which you can actually print out and download with all the details and everything that they've actually put on and time and date. Please note, you might have noticed that in a lot of the times now, it'll actually have AEST next to it. The reason being is um, we've actually just put in time differentials inside the system here. So if you're in Darwin, like you, Heidi, it, um, you can actually now change your time frames to suit incidents in Darwin. So it, um, if you're in Western Australia, you can actually set Western Australian times. So you do that via your site register. So just to let you know the, this new feature in here. So therefore, the checklist was done on the exact time that you want to do it in your state or area. You can change it for daylight savings when um, you know New South Wales changed it for daylight savings and those Queenslanders stay the same. So it, um, you can come through here and do the checklist. You've got those tick boxes. This rating system, which is great if you've got something that you want to gauge or anything like that. Remembering you're creating that gauge. It might be zero out of 100. So, um, so you've got the buttons here. They work exactly the same way as the mandatory ones. But now, like if we select no here, you'll see that there's no mandatory no because I turned that off. You've got percentage rates. You've got bulk text. You know, this one here, say for an example, with the kind of date range or whatever it may be, is because, yes, it does time stamp it that this was checked, this was done on this day, this time. But there might be a, um, a couple of clients said, yeah, but we actually want to actually log that this, they did this on this day back then. So that's what that date field is. So, and then you've also got a time field as well that you can actually, you know, select a, a certain time or whatever it may be that it was. You've got multiple ones here where you can actually select multiple people to actually say, these are the people that actually turned up to, say for an example, a toolbox talk. And you've got this great feature where you can actually upload a picture and actually draw on the picture. Text box is normal. This is another new feature. You can actually build a rating 
So you can actually maybe do surveys for your employees. Slide upgrade into this section here, whereas now you can actually add multiple signatures and pick up the person's name. This original one will pick up the person who's actually doing the checklist and put it in into the form. So you could use that for toolbox talks if you wanted to do so. So when they select save, it'll go back straight into the toggle, toggle information and in the log, turns that into a PDF. print out all the PDF with everyone's signatures on it and even the drawing on that picture. You might have noticed we've actually updated the look of this checklist to make it much neater as well. Now, the checklist feature, yes, is arguably the most used feature inside the system, but this new feature, you should definitely be using it especially if you're multi-site. So what is a monitor? We had one client, they have 800 hoists over 100 odd sites. They've gone, we love the checklist feature, Phil, and we can scan a QR code. We've got QR code on each of our hoists. The team will have to do is scan the QR code. They bring up the pre-start checklist. They do the checklist, fantastic. I get an email to receive that, hey, that checklist has been done. But I actually want to see a board that lets me know that that checklist has not been done. So imagine going, oh, have they done that checklist or not? I haven't received an email. I, I want to check. So you can actually now, if I just select edit next to Melbourne, and if I just go edit item, so this is going, I'm actually going to, it's only related to a checklist at the, at the moment. So this checklist, and I want to save an example at this site, and this is the checklist that I want to monitor. And, you know, basically, sorry, this is the site I want to monitor, and this is the checklist I want to, want to see. Just leave these as default. Actually, do you want to make it public? Yeah, you do. Submit. So basically, at the end of the day, you've done that. You might build another checklist. It might relate to the same site as on another machine. So this might be forklift one, forklift two, forklift three. Okay. So, or you might actually want to do it that this is a certain monthly checklist that's done over multiple sites. So you might select this as this is the site of Parramatta, this is the site at Castle Hill, and this is the site at such and such you want them to do. If you have a specific uh, checklist that's done daily, weekly, monthly, six monthly or 12 monthly, and you want to monitor that, especially on one site or over other sites, and you're not sure how to do it, book yourself in for, with myself. As I've said to multiple clients, just think of all the checklists that you want to want to do on any given day and see that they've actually done it. And then book yourself in and I'll go, okay, this is what you do here. You do this, 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 and this. And then we can actually build it. Once it's built, it's built. So the beauty about this checklist feature, monitor, the individual monitor. So the individual monitor, so do you want do you want to be notified that this monitor has been completed? Yeah. So you can select more than one employee. But basically, if I select myself, this is another thing that people wanted to see. They go, we didn't know um, where these actions relate to when they do a checklist. What well, does it actually relate to? So now you'll be able to see in the report that this there was an action related to this checklist and this is the action on this item. So uh, hide all complete actions, or you can actually say, you know what, I don't want to see the ones that's been completed. I just want to see the ones that are outstanding. And you can do it by a date range. I only want to see the last week's worth of ones that are outstanding. So, and then basically at the end of the day, you can actually, the person responsible to actually complete this monitor, right? And, and basically at the end of the day, this person is going to receive, sorry, this, that's the person is going to receive an email that that monitor has been completed. So if I select view, you can print out QR code. You can stick that in your factory or stick that wherever it is. And you can say to your um, you know, foreman or managers or whatever it is, 
These are the checklists that you're going to do every single day. I want them done. Scan the QR code. Instead of them logging and scanning four QR codes, they can scan one, and just come through here, and they can actually do the, do the checklist. So they come through here, do the checklist. Hopefully it's not long term. Yes, good. Submit. And what that will do, it actually turns that into a green tick. It actually does, here's the log of that checklist that's been completed. If there was any action, maintenance or hazards, it would literally put it underneath here so you can actually see, hey, this check, there was something wrong with this checklist, it had an action put against it. So the person actually goes through here and completes all, all their kind of uh, checklist on any given day, a day or the time frame that you've actually set for that monitor. And again, if you want to learn how to do that uh, kind of um, processes, book yourself in for a meeting with me. So they go through in here. Let's just say, for an example, you know, the person that was actually, you know, was required to, to, to you know, get this done was Phil Bamford. I'm going to submit it to say that I've completed it. But it's gone. Hang on a sec. You didn't complete two checklists. Why? Why didn't you complete those two checklists on that monitor? Uh, because we weren't open today, or they can write text. All right, so, and then they can submit. So basically, that monitor will stay the green ticks and red crosses until tomorrow, because that's been set every day. It'll go back to red crosses. But if I come to the log, it also will actually highlight in the, in the log and all that kind of stuff of all the different things as well. So you can actually print out a report on any daily monitor that you've actually done. So if it was if it wasn't done for no reason, it'd be a big red cross. But if it's done and they've given a reason, it'll actually be this orange minus sign. But see this report here, this exact report is emailed out to actually the person who actually uh, needed to, who was going to be notified. So if I actually just come over here. So basically, if I go, oh, this is the check, this has been completed. But also, it's sent me as the manager because I've been set to receive when this is, is which, which, when, when this monitor is due. So if I make this monitor due in a month or whenever that person submitted it, basically. So most of the time, you would make it daily, especially certain things that you would do every single day. Now, you might have multiple sites. A lot of you do. So now if I go monitor board, you can actually literally get those that monitor from each one of those sites. So this is the monitor from, you know, this is picking up all, all my checklists and my monitors. So so well, this is my monitor list, sorry. So if I can go, I want to check, that's my Audi hoist. I can even change the color of my monitor to make it look good. It's um, kind of use these things, leave them as they are. At the time you can even change all these different things, but, but you might want to change this because you just want, you know, basically just want to differentiate between one side and the other. But this is picking up your monitors. This is building your, your, your kind of monitor board, and you can go through and you can actually build your monitor board. If I actually select view now, what this has done is take each one of your monitors that you've actually created and put them on a board. Again, I could have changed those colors. You can even put your own logo up here as well, All right? So, so that's that was that upload field when at the bottom when you actually were doing that. So technically, you could actually have this on a computer sitting in your office, and you can actually see what checklists have been done on any given day or what checklists have not been done on any given day, because this page auto refreshes every thirty seconds and it will go to a green tick. So again, it produces a report, so you've got a daily log of all this kind of stuff as well. If you're not using these features, you should be. So especially if you really need to want to show quality to say, this is what I'm doing, I'm monitoring these checklists that they're done every single day and any given day. All right, let's just go quickly 
And I'm going to be doing a session in the incident section after we've put a couple of little extra things inside here. So you'll see that there will be a, a, a newsletter going out next week and then I'll be going, okay, we're going to be doing a big kind of thing on the incident section. But let's just come here because it has been a big change and but it it is a change for the better and hopefully you'll see that. So it's um so one of the things that people have, are wanting uh, in the past is if I come incidents here and if I select my incident types, before you could actually add incident type here and not do that. So we've taken that functionality away from all users. It's basically just the manager and, and admin via the register now. So, so you're looking at the behavioral form where it actually produced the behavioral form. Please be patient. It is going to be there in the next couple of days. So, so that that those preloaded ones that we had there before will definitely be there. But it is we've got a new severity level inside here that is actually going to lead into this other kind of upgrades that we're doing relating to. Okay, if it's this type of incident, another thing that people are wanting is, let's just say if it's a behavioral incident, I actually don't want that to go to you know Andy every single time. I want it to go to this person because they look at their chart. Oh, it's a vehicle incident. I want them to go to the vehicle person. It's a customer service incident. I want them to go to the customer service officer. So you'll be able to customize where the email goes for each individual site and each individual type. But the big new, there's two big new features in this incident section. One is that you can come here for add the incident types. You can add your own type. Let's come into here because I, I got Kim to actually build this before this meeting where you can actually say, and a lot of you do actually have quality issues or it's an event. Like say, for example, I had one client said, we had an event here where we had a fire. Where do I log that? Well, now you can actually put your incident type as event. So, and then basically you can actually, this is just using the checklist feature. So you're literally building the bottom half of the form using the checklist feature. So if I actually come here and if I select add new incident and I'm going to select it as an event, yes, all the top is still the same. But basically at the end of the day, it's the bottom here is whatever I want. I've actually selected quality once. She did a better job than that one. So if I select quality, Then you can actually save an example. It might be damaged product. This is the employee, and they were the, the, the main person injured. And then the contractor, they were just, you know, first aider. So, but him actually built this using the checklist feature. This is just using all the features inside the system, text field, and basically a drop-down list, and then tick boxes and so forth. So you can actually create this kind of stuff. So you're creating the bottom half of the form relating to your type of business. If you've got a certain kind of thing that you want to log the incident type and you've got your own specific kind of thing, oh, I'd really like to see this. I'll give an example. It might be an event relating to the, the construction of a building. Oh, what actually happened? Well, this wasn't actually done. And then you can actually build something like that inside the system. So it is, it's made it very, very powerful instead of people going, oh, well, hang on a sec, if I select this, it just brings up a mandatory thing that I, I can't change this. But now you can. You can build your own forms at the bottom. Right here. The other big, big factor is if I select this site here of Victoria, and basically, I'm going to fetch latitude and longitude, and the incident occurred there. Confirm. So the system now does geo mapping of latitude and longitude. So with part three of this upgrade in this system is going to be relating to all the new reports. So imagine if you're Darwin, up there in, in where you are, Heidi, you've got your council, you've got your airport, you've got all those other different areas. You can upload a map of each one of those sites relating to the airport, relating to the, the council kind of things and so forth. And when they log an incident, they can drop a pin on that. And then later on, 
you'll be able to develop a report of all your sites, where all the incidents are coming from. They're coming from here because we've tracked the latitude and longitude and we can drop pins on those maps. So basically, at the end of the day, where it's going to go to in here. So if I come to, and I think I've shown most people, so it's um, because I'm pretty excited about it. And even though I get, do get excited about the system thing. So you'll be able to do stuff like this, track things like this, put dots on all that. So that's why we've just purchased this new third party software called Wine Reports. And that's where you'll be able to develop your own reports inside the system. The incident process is exactly the same. It's just what the only thing we've changed in the incident process, invest, sorry, in the investigation process is basically a lot of people want to actually reassign the investigation to other people or no formal investigation needed and they, then they get sign off. But all these kind of fields are the same. It's just that we've actually done it in a way that you can actually just go to whatever it is that you want. There is going to be a slight tweak to here where you can actually add your own contributing factors and corrective measures, which is going to be a great feature. This here is just picking up the incident form. A lot of people have gone, yeah, I want to, instead of opening up one page and then going back and going backwards and forwards when I'm doing the investigation, I can actually see it right next to me. And then basically, and then I can actually do my investigation based on whatever it is. But I will be doing some detailed helpers and all that kind of stuff in that there. As mentioned at the start, um, before some people come on early, it's, uh, the app offline version is now available. All you need to do is go to either your Apple uh, store or your Android store and look for WHS systems and see this logo and then you download it. There is no charge for the app. It's just an added bonus. At the moment, as I mentioned before, you can log an incident and log a hazard. I've got a meeting with the developers tomorrow, as I do every fortnight with them. I have done for the last couple of months while they've been developing it for me. You'll be able to, in the next week or two weeks, I think it's going to be next week, you'll be able to log maintenance, log actions, and do a checklist. So basically, and, uh, and then after that, we're adding the access to a safe work method statement and so forth. So all that will be done by the end of July, but this new checklist phase, phase the, the due date is supposed to be the end of this week, So, which is exciting. So all you have to do for the app is when you download it, you've got your username and password, enter your username and password that you use in the system. That's your access point. That's all you have to do. So it, um, and you know, later on, there's going to be obviously upgrades to that kind of process. But um, yep, so hopefully you can actually see that these features here, if you're not using them, you should be. If you want to know, learn more or say, these are the things I want to monitor, Phil, I've been thinking about that, book yourself in for a meeting and we can go over it and I can show you how to do it and we can even build it in front of you. So in the incident section, yes, we do apologize for some of the things in a uh, couple of you know, errors in there but it is for the greater good because it is going to be a sensational feature, especially when we're putting a new claim section in uh, in step three of all this kind of process as well. So, so you'll be able to mon monitor and manage claims within the system. Again, no charge in system subscription. It's just making the system the best it can be. All right, well, I've talked for just over half an hour nonstop as I normally can. So it, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, uh, webinar. And, um, you know, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email afterwards. At, um, and uh, if you really want to know more about stuff, please book yourself in for a, a meeting. At, um, things that's coming into the system in the coming three months, other than upgrades, you know, making this even better and, and um, the new kind of um, claim section is we're doing a big, big upgrade to the contractor section, which is really going to create a contractor management portal. It's going to be a fantastic feature. It's going to help you manage contractors and contra uh, contractors and their subcontractors coming on and off your sites. So it's extremely, it's going to be extremely powerful tool, but 
we'll definitely be putting a notification up and sending an email out and doing all the videos before it gets pushed live like the boys did. Uh, you shouldn't have done that. But anyway, it's it's it um we've managed it and uh and I think there's a couple of tweaks just going in there in the next couple of days as well. But those other forms that were preloaded before are coming back into the system. All right, have a great day. And um, I don't know where you are, but in Sydney, it's absolutely freezing, 16 degrees and, and a sunny day. So, so it's um, and like minus two in the nighttime. Anyway, take care and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that.